In this micro nugget, we're going to get the adaptive security appliance functioning with the latest version of GNS3. As of the time of this recording, that is 0.8.7 of GNS3. Let's jump in. Yes, indeed, I did not lie. It is 0.8.7 as of the time of this recording. I'm going to here at the gns3.net site, I'm going to go to the download link and I'm going to download the all-in-one installer for 32-bit and 64-bit systems. I won't bore you with the install. I'm just going to do a spousal install. That means I'm going to say yes to everything this installation asks me, and then we'll come back in the GNS3 environment and get it set up with the ASA. All right, we've installed GNS3 and we have launched it and we get this setup wizard. Awesome. I'm going to click on step one and I'm going to navigate to my Dropbox where I have set up a GNS3 root and I have a projects folder. Then for images, I've got those in GNS3 uh, as well on my Dropbox. That's GNS3 root images. So go ahead and navigate to the projects and images folders that you would like. I love to leverage Dropbox here. We're going to say OK. Step two, we're going to test our settings with Dynamips and make sure it's in good shape. We should see a green message here, a message in green saying successfully started for Dynamips. That's awesome. And now we are at our third step. We'll go ahead and we'll add an image here for a router. And this will come in really handy when we go to test our ASA here momentarily. So I'll grab the 7200 image, for example, and we will save and say close. We just got a warning there that we need to set up the idle PC value for that router. No problem, we'll do that now. We bring the router in, we right click, we start it. We then right click and go to the console for that router. And I'll go ahead and wait for this thing to boot. I'll pause the video and once the router's booted, we'll set the idle PC value. Okay, great. Our router is booted. Hit carriage return a couple times. Make sure that everything is done and the router is in an idle state. You can close the console now, right click and choose idle PC. It says, please wait while calculating an idle PC value. As you probably know with GNS3, if you don't do this, GNS3 can consume all of your CPU and it's not fun at all. We're going to drop down this list of idle PC values and we're going to see if any has an asterisk. None do. We'll go ahead and cancel that and we'll run it again. So we'll right click, choose idle PC and have it automatically calculate an idle PC value that would be preferred for us again. All right, we're going to drop the list. And there's one. The second one in the list is found to be great. We'll say OK. And it applies that idle PC value. By the way, I'm in Windows 8, so I can fire up Task Manager and I go to Performance. And we can see that our CPU is indeed idle enough for our purposes. The reason why it's not completely idle right now is because we are having the software that records this for my demonstration purposes. So we've got a lot going on on this machine, but if the idle PC was not set correctly, we would see the CPU would be totally getting slammed by GNS3. Things look good. I'll go ahead and stop this router and we'll go ahead and delete it out of the topology. We'll bring in a router in a moment to test our ASA against. And speaking of the ASA, it's time to get it set up. So we're going to go to the edit menu and we're going to choose preferences. Here is the emulator for the ASA. So we're going to select it on the preferences dialog. And then we're going to go to the ASA tab and look at this. It has a pre-configuration we can load for an ASA 8.4.2. We could also load a pre-configuration for 8.0.2. This is so cool. So I'm going to select that particular version and choose apply. It puts in the RAM for this image, the options for the emulator, the kernel command line settings. This is so great. It does all this for us. And this can be a real pain point when you're trying to get one of these ASAs working in GNS3. All I have to do is navigate to the images that make up the ASA. So I go to the two files that we are going to utilize, the 
init rd in the kernel files that you can extract uh, from your ASA that make up these settings. That's all we have to do now. And we are going to say save. It takes these ASA settings and it saves them for you. We say OK and we are now ready to test our ASA inside this latest release of GNS3. I love to test against a router like I said. So I'm going to select our router that we set up in this demonstration. I'm going to grab our ASA that we just set up in this demonstration. And I'm going to go and shift click our connections and connect these two with gigabit ethernet. And then I'm going to start these devices. Ah, look at this. Windows Firewall is blocking the ASA emulator. I'll say, you know what? Allow that. And now we'll close this up close that up and we'll right click our router and go to its console. Let's get this router set up so that we can test the ASA functionality and test the ASA communicating with other devices in our emulated network here. All right, there we go. We're going to go to the gigabit 1/0 interface, give it an IP address and no shut it. Beautiful. Now we are ready to slide over to our ASA. I'm going to right click it, bring up the console for the ASA, and we can see that we are experiencing an error here. What we'll do is I'll restart GNS3 at this point. All right, so here we are in GNS3 restarted. I'm going to grab my firewall. I am going to grab my router. I should have just restarted right off the bat after setting all that stuff up, but I was trying to go really, really quick here. Uh, let's see, we're going to shift click and we are going to add our interfaces and we're going to start. By the way, we didn't see this before and that was most likely our issue. Yeah, the emulator did not launch properly. That Windows firewall probably did impede that. Okay, now let's start with the ASA here because that's the tricky part. And look at that, the ASA is indeed loading. All right, I'll minimize that. I'll right click R1 and go to its console once again, and we'll get it set up for testing purposes. Interface gigabit zero one slash zero, our IP address. We'll no shut that interface. And how's our ASA doing? Let's bring up that. Looks like it is almost fully booted here. Okay, great. It is fully booted. We will go to the gigabit. Uh, let's see what interfaces we have here. We will show interface IP brief and gigabit ethernet zero is what we connected. And we will say IP address is 10, 10, 10, 100. We will no shut that interface. We will give that interface a name. And this is the outside interface. We will no shut it and let's ping the ASA at this point from our router. We can't ping through the ASA, but by default we can ping to the ASA and we see we are communicating with our adaptive security appliance just fine from our R1 device. I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.